What's up everybody and welcome back to yet another Addictive Fishing Tutorial 201 series. Today we're out here on the lake and we're going to talk you through three different tips that can make you a little bit more of an advanced trout angler. So if you want to learn more about those systems, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. run through of the gear we're going to show you guys today. First one is an ultralight rod with a spinner setup that actually has an inline weight. I'm going to show you more about that setup in a second, then I'll show you how to fish it. The next setup is one we've talked a lot about in our tutorials lately, and it's a fixed float, addicted float system with a miniature worm, a micro worm of any size and color. We're going to talk more about that system, and then we're going to talk about using the same fixed float to fish a bait suspended off the bottom. So first things first, we're going to go with the spinner. The way I have this set up is very unique, and it's, it's mainly to get you down. This is a technique that's going to help you spinner fishermen out there to actually get down on the strike zone a little bit better than you have been. Most trout spinners are naturally very small. They don't come like in a big profile, so they don't have a lot of weight to them either. So what I've, what I've done here to help myself counteract that is done probably the most easy and basic method possible to add weight, and it's just put a split shot on my line. So the setup I'm using for this inline weight spinner setup is a two to six pound Okuma Salilo ultralight rod. I have a 2000 or 3000 series reel on it. This I have a 20 pound enforcer addicted braid on here. It's made by Tough Line and that's very nice. It's a little heavy for trout obviously, but the thing is you don't break off as often and this line goes very smooth through your guide. So it helps you cast these light setups a long ways. At the end of that braided line, I have a fluorocarbon bumper tied of 10 pound test. And that's a blood knot. And if you guys want to learn how to, how to join braided line to fluorocarbon line, look it up on YouTube. There's a lot of different knot tutorials. We even have them here on our page. I have a 10 pound leader all the way down to a swivel that I've put in line. This is a normal barrel swivel. I've tied my 10 pound to the left side. And then I've tied a, another leader of about four feet, three or four feet to the other end where my Panther Martin lies. And so the nice part of putting that barrel swivel in there is it eliminates that spin from that spinner to twist up your line and mess up your cast and just completely ruin your line in general, as well as it adds a little stopper for your split shot here. And this is the 201 end of this tutorial. Uh, this is a basic spinner setup if you guys have already fished before and you're just learning how to fish for trout. This is one that's gonna allow you to get into a different set of the strike zone. You can fish that spinner all by itself and still catch them, but in some lakes and in some parts of lakes, you're gonna wanna add weight to that spinner. And this is a really quick, easy, effective way to be able to add more and more weight. So I just took that split shot, I pinched it right on my line, I'm gonna grab my gripper pliers here, and I'm gonna give it a pinch down. And what that's gonna allow me to do is get into a whole nother access plane of the lake quicker. So I'm gonna be able to cast and retrieve this through different depths of the, of the lake without having to change my setup or add or subtract weight. I can just reel it back in, I don't have to cut anything, and I can just pinch a split shot back on there and add that much more weight to my line. So now that I've gone over the setup, be sure to comment below if you guys have any questions or if I talk too fast, make fun of me. But I'm gonna take this setup, let's hook over to the edge of the lake and let's get this fishing. Okay, so I'm ready to fish this now. And one thing I wanna iterate on when you're fishing this setup, again, because you've added so much weight, is you wanna fish areas that have trenches. You wanna fish deeper water. This area that I'm in right now is a big trench out into the middle of the lake. And I know that just from experience here on this body of water, but really the key to this is, is to not fish an area that's too shallow or else you're gonna constantly be dragging the bottom, which is gonna completely contradict you even putting this setup on. In that case, you're gonna take your weight off and just fish your spinner. But I know it's about 12 feet deep, starts at six and goes all the way to 12 on the way out here. So I I want this thing sinking the entire time I'm bringing it towards me. So I'm always gonna start in a counterclockwise or clockwise manner, casting toward, towards the bank in the area that I'm at. So I'm gonna make my first cast over here to the left, and I'm just gonna let that thing sink for a split second. You gotta remember you got double the weight on here, so that thing's sinking quickly. And mainly the key to this is, is that this thing is spinning and sinking at the same time. That's why we put the split shot on, because it leads that spinner down into the strike zone and keeps it deep in and out in front of those fish. So I'm gonna start working my way through here counterclockwise, like I said, or clockwise, left and 10 more feet, 20 more feet to the right, 20 more feet to the right, and keep moving on through until I've covered that area completely. Then I'm gonna use my boat or my feet and I'm gonna to move to the next area. And the speed that you're reeling is really gonna be dictated by if you're hitting the bottom or not. If you're not actually hitting bottom any of the time, you can let that thing keep falling, you can reel even slower. Because again, that split shot is actually gonna create a pull in front of that spinner as it pulls it down and it's gonna keep that blade spinning even when you're reeling less than you normally would. So I'm gonna adjust that speed just to where I feel that slight little bit of tension. I can feel it's not on bottom. Ever so often I'll feel it actually hit the bottom and I'll start reeling a little bit quicker to make sure it doesn't sink too far. So 
Now that I've worked my way out to the deepest spot, I want to show you guys a little trick on how to define when you hit the bottom. That's probably the biggest thing for a beginner fisherman that is hard to learn is knowing when you're set too deep or when you've waited long enough to hit the bottom. And it's a very simple, simple action that'll actually help you do this. So I'm gonna cast it way out there into the deepest spot. And guys, I want you, I want you to watch my line as it hits the water. I have my line laying on the water and it's falling. You can watch right at the end of my rod tip, you see the wakes coming off my line. It's falling, it's falling, it's falling, and as soon as everything stops, bam, no more ripples, no more wake, that's when it's hit the bottom. That's the best way to be able to tell. And so as that thing falls, it'll actually keep falling, keep falling and falling, and there'll be a, either, a, you'll either feel that thump or again, you'll just see your line stop falling down and into the water. And so that little test right there, close your bail, let your line go tight and watch that little ripple of line as your line, right where your line touches the water. And as soon as that stops and goes away, that's when you know you're on bottom. Okay, everybody so using those methods using that weight system and casting in that 360 degree radius or just counterclockwise or clockwise depending on if you're stuck on the bank will definitely help you get in front of more trout and again get you in a different sort of strike zone so now let's head on to the next method so the next method I'm going to show you guys is something that I'm really excited to show you and it's one that's really close to our hearts and it's our addicted fixed float system so what I have here is I have an inline float system I have my same two to six pound rod 20 to 30 pound braid, all the way down to a fluorocarbon bumper, 10 pound once again, put together with a uni knot or a blood knot, and then this fixed float system. So what this is, is it's two rubber grommets and then the float itself. I like to use only one weight, especially for this system that I'm about to show you, and that is the fixed float and the micro worm system. So I have our fixed float, it has one rubber grommet that goes on the line, the line goes through the hole in the bobber to the base end, and we put the rubber grommet on the bottom and the top. And you don't actually have to put them all the way on there. You can actually let them sit just about half ways or so because it'll keep from fraying through and actually cutting through that rubber. And it'll allow you a little bit more height for your mending. So the way the fixed float system works is that it's fixed to your line so you can adjust your depth accordingly to where you're fishing with that bumper line that you have on here. So that this bobber actually slides up and down the line. I'm holding the line, sliding the bobber, and I can adjust my depth to whatever range I'm gonna be fishing. And on the end of it here is probably what you're all really wondering about. And it's the micro worm setup. This is just a normal bubblegum pink Mad River worm with a little jig head. Mustad makes these, a lot of different companies make these. A shad dark type of jig head will work just as well. But just any sort of Berkeley worm, any sort of micro Mad River worm, or these little pink worms like we use for salmon and steelhead can work really, really good for this method. So quick run through the setup again. You got your normal two to six pound ultralight rod. You got your braided line all the way down to your bumper line of fluorocarbon. Your bobber goes right on to your fluorocarbon line and that ties right to the jig head that has our little micro worm on it. So a good variation of color and a good variation of worms in general is gonna help you be more successful. We have some much more in-depth bobber and worm tutorials and micro worm tutorials on our page. So go down in the link and check it out and see some of the more in-depth tutorial on the actual worm fishing itself. I'm just doing a quick run through for you guys out there who don't know about it yet. So now we're gonna show you how to fish it. So the way we're gonna be fishing this is with a lot of movement. I know this area that I'm fishing is about 10 to 12 feet deep. So I wanna to set to about three quarters to half that depth. You never wanna really set your bobber, your fixed flow on your, on your fluorocarbon line any longer than your rod is long. And what I mean by that is you don't wanna have more leader to cast than your rod is long because it'll get to be too much of a pain in the butt. That's when you're gonna to switch to a slide float setup. But I know I'm fishing a shallower area. This works really good in shallow ponds and, and different little lakes that you can fish around that have big flats on them. So I'm fishing about six to eight feet deep and I'm gonna show you the method that we're gonna use. Basically, you can have fun with this one. You can cast it as far as you want. I'm gonna go way out there. And this is a very active, active way of fishing. You'd think that when you're using just a fixed float, you're not gonna be create, creating much movement on that, on that lure or that worm that you have underneath it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that thing sink and about every three seconds, I'm gonna lift, pull it, pull, pull it towards me and then let it fall again. And the way you're gonna tell it's falling all the way is when your bobber stands straight back up. I can see my rubber grommet sticking straight up in the air. I know it's falling straight back up again. And now that it's falling, I'm gonna pull it towards me, raise it to the surface, and then I'm gonna let it fall. And each time I'm doing that, I'm reeling up that 10 to 12 foot of slack that I've created by lifting my tip up. 
And that's just a very, very easy basic, basic method that we're gonna use here. And what happens is that thing gets pulled up and it starts to fall down nice and slow. And those fish can see that. And they see that dying motion and that natural falling effect of, of the prey that they eat in the lake. There's a lot of worms in most lakes around, believe it or not. And so they see these worms, they see them falling down slowly, that tail's wiggling back and forth, and they can't help themselves. So it's basically what's happening is we're using the weight and the identification of that bobber being out there in order to let, let us lift and make this fall. We're almost doing a jigging motion. So you can see as I pull that thing up and I let it fall, it does that nice twirly little appetizing little dance as it falls down to the bottom and those fish really can't help it. Key is is just getting it in front of them. So using that clockwise or counterclockwise mentality will get you covering more water and put you in front of more fish. Be sure to comment below if you guys have any questions about this and we're going to cut to a short little b-roll clip of Marlin smashing some fish on this method. The next method I'm gonna talk about is a very pinpoint accuracy type of method, and it's that same fixed float setup, but with bait. What I'm gonna do differently here is I'm actually gonna do, it's almost, a, it's a combination of the two methods that I just showed you guys. So I'm gonna cut a little bit of that line here. I got my worm just dangling off here, I just cut that off. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a barrel swivel just like I did to the spinner. I'm gonna add a barrel swivel right here, and I'm gonna add weight on top of it, and then I'm gonna add my bait leader below that. And what that's gonna allow is for me to pinpoint accurately, go to the level of the, of the water column that those fish are feeding at. Some days you wanna be on the bottom, but there's also a lot of days out here, especially if you're in the spring or summertime, where those fish are gonna be this far under the surface, or only up to six feet, or eight feet. And when you're fishing 15 feet, and you put it on the bottom, you're gonna have to have an awful long leader to reach that column of the water that those fish are hunting in. So we're going to be able to pinpoint accurately go to that spot in the water column that we want to be in with this setup here. Yeah, so I'm going to grab my swivel here. And this is again, just so that that weight doesn't slide around. I could theoretically just put my hook on the line and tie the bait straight to it, but I like to have this swivel one because it adds a skosh amount of weight. And it also creates my, my line from tangling up at all. And again, it creates that barrier in between my line and that big heavy split shot so that it's not sliding down and going over my line and down to my bait. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this weight off. And this is a pretty unconventional method, but again, I really like using it because you can get your bait and hold your bait at the exact same depth that you want it. So I'm gonna tie that jig head right here. And I'm actually gonna use my jig head as my hook. You could also add split shot down your line, kind of like a, like, a, like a steelhead setup, but this is gonna work really good. You can match your uh, jig head color, of course, if it's the Mustad jigs, to whatever color that your power bait's gonna be. But I'm just gonna use one of these little nuglets here. Grab one of these bad boys. Those are very convenient because they're already pressed down and in the right shape. I'm gonna hook this thing right through here and I'm gonna run that hook just like that. And there it is, you got that nice round profile. You can even put two on there. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it just for fun, just because we got room. If you use a bigger jig head, you can put even more if those fish are really wanting a lot of bait. So just like that, look at that. Look at how perfect, how castable, how easy that is to fish. And I'm gonna throw this out. And again, this is really gonna be important if you need to diagnose and pinpoint accurately get in front of those fish in that certain water column. So wherever you set your jig, as far as depth, is right where it's gonna be in that strike zone. So I got about four and a half feet here. I know it's about eight feet over here. I'm gonna cast it out and let's see what happens. So one quick tip that will help you acquire more bites with this fixed float setup when you're using it with bait like this is having the proper amount of weight on your bobber. So these must-add fixed floats come with two separate weights, two of, these, two of these brass weights on it. I took one of them off because I was using that jig and I wanted that thing to fall and still have resistance against the fish. But in this case, you want these fish to be able to pick up your, your jig and your power bait and swim away with it without feeling any resistance. So if you start noticing you're getting little bites and you're gonna see that in your bobber correlate, you're gonna get those bites and if it's not taken taking it under and swimming away with it, you might want to add weight so that there's less resistance against that fish as it eats your bait and swims away. So they won't be feeling it as much and they won't let it go as quick. So add those weights, keep those weights on there or subtract them due to what the bite's telling you. 
there it is you guys, three awesome and a little bit more advanced techniques that will help you guys go out and catch more fish. Adjusting your depth, changing colors, changing presentations, and keeping yourself moving around the lake will always make you a better trout angler and put you in front of more fish. If you guys want to see more awesome tutorials just like this one, be sure to go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down, hit subscribe, turn your bells on, and comment below, and you could be the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thanks so much for tuning in guys, you stay fishy, we'll see you out there.